Eight o'clock on the dot here at the spot. This is what you got. Oh, JC. Ready to break it on through. Let me get my camera adjusted here. The other day, the Wi-Fi was out for over 36 hours. No telling what kind of excitement we'll have courtesy of it tonight. Man. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like it. Hold on a second. Let's see if I can get it together without pushing everything off the damn table. It's still way too much ceiling. I just screwed up, man. Like that. No, no good. All right. I don't know what I'm doing. Y'all, I'll, I'll get this together here in a second. I know you're all like, yeah, I've, we've heard that before, Jay's old JC. Hold on. I think we're uh, now. I think we're good. It don't look any damn different at all. Good gosh. Hold on a second, y'all. I know what y'all are saying, and I don't blame you. Damn, but yeah, why you shed this stuff fixed before you go on live, son? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, I just broke my boom stand. So, all right. There's one gone. I guess we're gonna do it old break on through way. You know, son of a bitch, man. Yeah, I know what y'all are saying. This is some good. <laughs> this is a good professional podcasting right here, boy. <laughs> All right, I got another tripod over there somewhere, but you know what? I ain't gonna try to find something. I'm just gonna go with this. Go for what you know. Go with the flow. I just happen to have a pissy Chrissy CD right here on my listening station, and uh, I will use that to prop the camera up. Or maybe not. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going to get this together here in a second. All right. There you go with a shot straight up the nose. It don't get no better than that. I can tell you that right now. Uh, okay, there goes that freezing up Wi-Fi. All right. Man, this is going to be a wonderful break on through. I can tell already. Just sipping on a little bit of that good old Clintonzilla Kentucky chamomile tea. And um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's, what's happening. Uh, and I know a bunch of y'all are going to join in a rousing chorus of, Damn, you played what you know, Zumba. I don't have nothing for you. Because, you know, for the last two days, I have been, like, I had to rent one of those big um, dumpsters. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's starting to get mowing time around this town. And, uh... And so I I got a brand new Toro mower sitting right over there still in the box that I need to get in the damn shed for whenever I get done using it. Man, that shed was stacked with stuff eye level high. And I wasn't going to get in there and try to rearrange everything. Oh, you know, we'll stack it up. You know, we'll put stuff on the ceiling and everything on the roof, everything. Nah, I just said, you know what? A lot of this stuff's just going to have to go. 
and go it did. Now I have a nice orderly shed. It was just me and a little Coleman. And I, I try to explain what my house, what the back of my house is like. We have a lower level backyard that has a bank that goes up and it levels off again. So it's like, you know, high and then goes to low and then there's, there's the house. The shed's on top of that hill and it's high up. It's got a ramp that goes to it. So I had to go out of the building, down the ramp, down the hill, across the yard, back up a hill to the trailer. And I would say I probably did that around 70 times yesterday. Um, and not quite that many times this morning. I was just stacking a big old stack of um, rotted, well, it was going to be firewood for outdoor fire pit, but we never used it. It was just all like wet sawdust. But... That's what I've been doing for two days and working on taxes in the morning and um, and tomorrow it's back it's back to the working class grind back to the job I gotta go to the job to get a little bit of rest <laughs> but um, I got a few things to talk about but man this is one of the things I see I don't even have a rapid fire thoughts lined up because I've been so you know kind of balls to the wall ever since Monday morning at about seven o'clock. So, uh, my apologies to you. I, you know, I am going to be talking about the shows we got coming up next week. Can you believe it? It's already next week is when it's all happening. And I've seen somebody mention it already. Aaron mentioned he can't, he's looking forward to the Eat the Turnbuckle show. Well, Aaron, Aaron, we are too now. We're looking forward to playing back in Philadelphia for the first time in I don't know how long, man. Um, I, I really can't remember when the last time was we played Philadelphia. But um, the anti-scene Philadelphia history goes back a long, 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 long way. And um, we're looking forward to being back, especially to see the final Bloodbath Battle Royal of Eat the Turnbuckle, one of the craziest bands on planet Earth. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good one. And uh, I look forward to seeing a bunch of you there. Uh, the next night, and that's at the Underground Arts in Philadelphia, this coming Thursday. Now, they made a post this past uh, Friday that there were less than 50 tickets left available now. I That, that may be... That shit may have sailed by now. This is Tuesday. So, I don't know. If you don't have a ticket and you want to go to this show, man, you might be S-O-L. So, I suggest uh, calling Underground Art or emailing them or something. You know, whatever you guys do to communicate with people nowadays and uh, find out if everything's still good. We're going to be there. It's going to be a good time. Nah, nah, nah. Gonna have a good time. Ah. Oh, yeah. And the next night, we're gonna be in Youngstown, Ohio, at the West Side Bowl on April 5th. And then we're gonna put a nice little bow on this weekend in the great town of York, Pennsylvania, at Skid Row garage in York, Pennsylvania. Next weekend. Not this coming weekend. Not the weekend that's coming right now. The weekend after. I had some good things in the mail today from my main main Dennis Hyland of Jack Hammer Music and Future Hate. Look at this, what he sent me, man. A 
special disc jockey record, not for sale, on the old yellow and black MGM record. Man, I love the way that record label looks. Look at that. Of my old pal, the late, great Simon Stokes. Thank you so much, Dennis. Dennis, every time I see something come from Mobile, Alabama, I know it's going to be some righteous good shite. Speaking of Dennis, Dennis, Dennis tried to line up uh, getting a birthday card signed for me by one of my favorite singers of all time. But her her caretaker and daughter intervened and decided no they would not get her mother to do such a thing which was quite a disappointment to me but i've recently acquired now this this record is 20 years old or cd so i'm sorry it's 20 years old but it is when miss gwen mccray decided to go into gospel I'm all about it. I can't wait to hear it. When I'm not listening to some Pissy Chrissy or some Alice Cooper Billion Dollar Babies, I'm going to throw in some Gwen McRae gospel CD. Have you guys ever heard of a, that band called The Dills? Anybody ever heard of the Dills? Started in the late 70s. I've seen a lot of thumbs. All right. You know, I, I just recently went through a bunch of my 7 inches. I used to have six boxes full of 7 inches. I now have about, I have one box left of records for sale, and I have one almost full box of ones I'm keeping. One of the ones I'm keeping is an original, uh, The Deals, I Hate the Rich, and You're Not Blank. Um, on what records? And, um, not that I'm holding, oh, this is going to be worth like $10 billion. I, I, it's, just, it's, it's a very sentimental record for me. Which is odd because, uh, you know, those guys kind of uh, pushed themselves as being communist. I don't think I'd want to sit and talk politics with them, but I'd sure like to have spoke to both the Kinman brothers while they were, while Tony was still alive. I'd love to talk to them about uh, how much that one little single just meant to me. It meant quite a bit, and... Uh, I don't know if anyone out there out California way happens to know Chip Kim and tell him old JC is a big deals fan. He'll probably say, who the hell is JC? Well. <coughs> mm. Got some tea leaves. And uh, little Coleman got out of the bath, and we were sitting on the couch and drying him off. We were just listening to music. <clears throat> and I was listening to a live version of You're Not Blank on there. And uh, you know how YouTube, it'll play, go to the next thing. <clears throat> it was playing um, the song... Red Rocker's Rule. And it made me think of something. Have you ever gone to see a band that, you know, you didn't know who they were, you didn't know anything about them, you didn't know who they were, whether they were going to be good or terrible, and you go see them and it just completely blows you away and you become a fan. <clears throat> we used to have a club here in Charlotte called Viceroy Park. 
Lots of great shows there. I saw Iggy Pop there. 999 played there. Um, God, who else? The Romantics. Man, ton. The Dad was scheduled to play there, but they can't. They canceled their tour. But um, <clears throat> I mean, I think we saw a picture of this group, Red Rockers, from Texas. Or San Francisco. I can't remember where they were from. But uh, we just saw a picture of them in Trouser Press or something. Never heard the record. Didn't know what they were about. And uh, we, me and a couple friends of mine went to Viceroy Park. This is when we still lived in... Uh, I think we are still living in Alabama. No, I don't know. Maybe I was a Charlotte citizen then. But uh, <clears throat> we went to see this group, Red Rockers, just based on a picture of them in trouser print. And um turned out to be some of the coolest guys you ever want to meet, man. Uh, they didn't treat us like we were getting in their way or like we were annoying to them. They treat them treated us like, you know, they were really interested in knowing what we had to say and what we wanted to talk about. And, and, and man, that, that kind of stuff always stuck with me. And I try to move that kind of thing forward in what I do. Now, I know in 40 years, I maybe there was a, some time there where I was not the most approachable son of a bitch in the world. But uh, I don't know. I think, I think now that we talk every week, a lot of you you probably feel like you, you've kind of got to know me a little bit. I, know, I kind of feel like I get to know a lot of you on here, but, uh, you know, we're, we're done with the 40 years into it. We're done with any kind of, uh, putting on airs or any kind of mystique or anything like that. You know, that's all out, out the window now. <clears throat> anti-scene is as anti-scene does as anti-scene is and anti-scene was. So, we call the shots, we do it like it is, and I just wanted to say that, that little connection with the Dills and Red Rockers, uh, I know that first album was really, really good, I don't, I don't think I have it anymore, I might still, I don't know, but uh, has anyone ever heard of them? I'm, I'm not get, getting much response uh, text-wise. You know what I ever heard of the group Red Rockers? I can't say much. I know they had a hit, or not a hit, but they, they had a video on MTV at one point, and it didn't sound like the Red Rockers that I, uh, you know, knew. It was them, but it just didn't sound, they had changed. <clears throat> but uh, I don't know. I just got to thinking about them when I was listening to the deals. Uh, I'll tell you another group, and this has to do with Viceroy Park again. Another group I saw, I saw them, was completely blown away by them, and to this day, I have never heard their album. I've seen it before. I never heard anything else about them. A band called Dirty Looks. Do we know anybody, does anyone out there know about Dirty Looks? looks <clears throat> I'll give the delay a little bit of time to catch up you know <clears throat> I wasn't even working class well I was working and I had very little class but man I'm wore out today can you dig it I am wore out y'all are being quiet tonight <clears throat> Brad, Brad's chiming in Oh, G.A., of course you get dirty looks all the time. Randy, Randy, you saw him twice? Okay, they had a radio song. Okay, I didn't even know that. But man, live, they were incredible. They opened for E.E. E. Pop. <clears throat> um, Y'all got anything you want to talk about? I mean, I've already killed... 20 minutes of your 
Tuesday evening. Let's get about another 20 minutes down, and then uh, I'll let you get back to, I don't know, frying up some eggs, cooking a steak on the grill or something. If you can afford a steak nowadays. <clears throat> Well, I'll just, I just, I, uh, I'll just talk about, next week a little bit, man, it's like, you know, with, with our band being so spread out, when we get together, those days are, those times are kind of, uh, kind of spaced out as to when they happen, and, uh, I, I go ahead and put my put my bandmates over, man. I, I really like hanging out with these guys. I, it's not one of those situations where, and I, and I, I, I won't lie to you. We <clears throat> we have had that situation where it was time to go on a string of shows, and I'm just going like, oh man, you know. <laughs> this is not like that. I, I really like these guys, and we get along great. We're working on a project right now called the Anti-Scene Time Machine. And, um, man, the stuff is coming out wonderful. I, I'm i waiting on some information so that I can do a nice information leak on the Anti-Scene page for y'all. But uh, I'm... I'm kind of skeptical about making announcements and I don't have something uh, something concrete to fall back on. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I mean, even even the crew that we got. You know, usually local shows, it's Mondo and Brandon. But when we travel the long distances, it has become Mondo is our main, main. I will say this, though, about this coming weekend. This, not this coming, but the following weekend. As always, and I'm going to say this every time because it's the way it is. It's my biz. You know what it is. When it comes to the anti-scene merchandise extravaganza Ultimo Mart, cash is always king. You hear me talking to you? Cash is always king. Now, I don't mean, oh, man, wait, I got the cash. Oh, I got the card. I can't buy nothing from the anti-scene extravaganza. Uh, no, no, you can't. We, we got a card reader, but we prefer cash for reasons I probably don't need to go into right here. <clears throat> I am not sure if there will even be a break on through next week. I might, I might be able to just like, well, I don't know, at eight o'clock. Yeah, yeah, I can do a, I can do a break on through next week. So, uh, yeah, we won't practice that late. Well, they might. I don't know. I'm not going to. But Yeah, I have a break. There won't be a tent talks tunes, I don't think, because uh, we'll be going. We will all be heading to Philadelphia on Wednesday night. I wonder if. Uh, I wonder if Malcolm would do a mobile. Tent talks tunes. Tent talks tunes. On the road. Can you imagine all of us being able to chime in? Well, there's Amy. Amy, your stuff went out today. Oh, actually, a lot of people's stuff went out. That took a carload of stuff to the post office this afternoon. So everybody will be getting in some good shite real soon here now.
Well, uh, how many people that are that are involved right now here on Break On Through? How, how many of y'all are we going to see this coming weekend? Not this coming, but next weekend. You know, why do I keep saying that on the shows? April fourth, fifth, and sixth. How many of y'all are we going to see? I mean, you know what I'm going to say next. You got to tell me something. The Zillas are going to be in Youngstown, Ohio. Erica will be in Philly and York. Christopher saying the last time he saw us was in 2005. Don't you think it's time to update your brain, Christopher? <clears throat> you don't know how many more dance steps we've learned since 2005. <clears throat> How y'all like that? How y'all like that wonderful lemon and lime in the water? Man, that's good for you right there, boy. Aaron's going to be in Philly. Let's see what else is going on here. Well, you know, even if you're not here with us right now live on Break On Through, if you're watching tomorrow or later on tonight, or if you got it playing on your forklift, listen to it. Stop and let us know are you, are, what town we're going to see you in. <clears throat> or Aaron, you read my mind. And I know that's not a very difficult read. But that's the thing that I'm waiting to hear from to find out if things are going to happen because our, our, oh man, I really, I hate to say this, man. I hate to say anything ahead of time and jinx something, but we're hoping to know something about false count anywhere between now and the 4th. My main man, Eric Burton, says he's going to see me in Wilmington. That's in the May run of shows. Now, y'all remember now, if you got some place to anti-scene to play, now don't you start none of that. Oh, man, we, we got uh, all the beer you can drink. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all something. We know where to get beer. We have jobs, so we can go buy all the beer we can drink. So that's not an incentive. Oh, the the bill, man, we're going to stack the bill with like 15 or 20 bands. Well, you know what? You sent us in the opposite direction there. If you want anti-scene in your town and you want us to help, but, want us to help you party it down, you need to contact Joey Killingsworth. That's our booking agent. He's our booking main with a booking plane. He knows what to tell. He knows what to say. Don't bother, man. Y'all, don't bother trying to book a show through me. You see, there's Clinton Zilla. Trying to make me reveal the thing that I'm thinking of, man. I'll just put it to you this way. We completed the CD version of False Count Anywhere. And it is our hope that we have it in our hands. To put into your hands for the first time ever at Underground Arts in Philadelphia, the Turnbuckle Final Bloodbath Battle Royal. Oh, yeah. That's our hope. <clears throat> but I haven't heard anything definite yet. And it's, we've gone over the time that we're supposed to wait, and uh, I ain't heard nothing. 
So in other words, if somebody from Blank Media happens to be uh, listening to a little break on through, my question, my my thing to you is, you got to tell me something. But you're saying, oh, you're putting it out on CD. Yeah, we're putting it out on CD, but it's also coming out on vinyl. On TKO, and you might go, well, damn, I got false count. And you ain't got false count anywhere about like this. This false count anywhere is every wrestling song the anti scene has ever done, and then some. Oh, yeah, and then some. You want me to tell you about the then sums? We do the before I hang. Modern classic tribute to the junkyard dog called Thump. And in a career highlight for me, we are doing a song about my good friend, a great inspiration. I'm talking about the one and only Mr. Number One George South, the bootleg preacher, the ballad of George South which also features George on the track himself. First time ever. Um, and we are also, we have also, and, 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 well, I, I can say, oh, we're going to do a new version, a new version, but it's all new versions. You ain't heard any of these. Head Honcho over at TKO Records told me the other day, he says, man, I, I would go so far as to say that I think some of these versions, quite a few of these versions, rival the originals. When people tell me stuff like that, I guess they think, oh, you're going to be pissed off, man. You think we don't like the old man? Man, listen, whatever we're doing now, that's what I want to hear about. That's what I want to know about. And, um, and he was just telling me that he thought that what we've done with the Ultra lineup for these wrestling songs rivals any of the other older versions. And I will agree with Mark Rainey, head honcho, TKO Records. I really I can't wait for y'all to be able to uh to hear it. I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. It's going to get your feet shuffling, your hands clapping, and your elbows dropping. Wait till you see the artwork. Wait, wait till you see the cover. Now, the, the LP is going to be different. I ain't going to tell you about that. But this was a design. I, I gave a skeletal version of the design to my main, main Dave Norton. And, man, he did some design magic on this that you guys and gals are just going to look at and go, man, this is, this is incredibleistic. That's right. Well, I hope we're going to have them. Then now, Malcolm. Malcolm's more of a optimist than I am, and I and I'm working really hard at trying to be a little bit more optimistic about things. But um, I, I mean, I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, Sixty years of <laughs> of doing something one way, it is kind of hard to uh, switch those gears. But uh, I am giving it the old preschool try. And uh, I'm trying not to get too uh, wound tight about it. But uh, well, dang, y'all. Uh, after we get back from this road trip, uh, Mondo, he's right here, Edward Braswell, has agreed to come on here and interview me. Now, any of y'all interested in doing this interview? Now, I I prefer to be somebody in town so that, you know, you can come do the interview and then get back to your humble abode. If you're out of town, man, it's uh it's hard um 
hard putting people up here nowadays with the the wild man Coleman uh, kind of <laughs> stomping through the place at, like a little Godzilla. But uh, but yeah, I I really like the format of uh, being interviewed because I don't know what y'all want to hear about and. As far as what to talk about, man, sometimes that it's best if that's pulled out of me. Y'all know what I mean. You've seen me on here for three years now. But uh, I'll tell you what. I reckon I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at that. Um, there will be a break on through next week, even if it's got to be a little late. Yeah. So, um, uh, all I can say is, man, I'm, I'm right. I apologize for not having something a little bit more ready to go for you, but, uh, I don't know. They all can't be home runs. <laughs> but uh, once again, man, I appreciate you coming and sitting with me for a little bit and uh, listening to me. Rub along. The upcoming um, Break on throughs will be a lot more action packed and exciting. I promise you. But uh, as I always say, man, I say it every time. I say, y'all have a great rest of your week. Have an even greater weekend. And I want to see all of you back here next Tuesday night. So, that being said, we'll see you soon. You know what to do. We are all going to break on through. Good night.